Good morning. It's the Senate Judiciary, um, Thursday, April, no, excuse me, Wednesday, April 7th. I'm already ahead of myself. Jeez. Um, we're working on S-99, which is a bill which would eliminate the statute of limitations in cases of child um, physical abuse. Similar to the bill that we did several years ago, that would eliminate the statute of limitations, or that did eliminate the statute of limitations for child sexual abuse. Um, so that was 2019 when we did that bill. Um, we have with us this morning Eric Fitzpatrick from Legislative Council, Kim Doherty, who represents some survivors from um, the Current Hatton School. Um, survivors of abuse, that, uh, and Jerry O'Neill represented many of the uh, survivors of abuse at uh, various uh, church, uh, involved with the Catholic Church, and who was instrumental in the drafting of the bill on uh, child sexual, eliminating the statute of limitations on child sexual abuse. Again, it's the civil for civil damages, not for the criminal. So, um, <clears throat> okay, we discussed it. A reason discussed. It. Excuse my term. <clears throat> the only notes I have, Eric, on on changes to the bill were a, in a redraft to. Um, make clear that attempts, attempted aggravated assault um, we use to physical, childhood physical abuse and we were concerned that an attempt at um, physical abuse would be extremely difficult for anybody to burden to prove and that uh, since attempts are part of aggravated assault we learned how to take that out Yes, in fact, I, I sent, uh, this is Eric Fitzpatrick with the Office of Legislative Council. Um, and yes, Senator Sears, I sent uh, Peggy a, a new version, which she posted that has some language to address the attempts issue. If you want to take a quick look at that. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, and I'll pull that up real quick. That's draft 1.1, 1. 1, Eric? Yes, exactly. So this is a, a proposed possible strike call for um, for S99, and at this point, as you say, Senator Sears, where this is only the first, only one issue at this point under discussion. But you see, it was actually pretty straightforward as I looked at it. It seemed like it was actually a pretty relatively straightforward fix. So just to clarify that the that the Remember, child physical abuse is the operative term here because that's um, the offense for which your the proposal is to repeal the statute of limitations. Uh, but again, as you mentioned, the issue had been the, how the difficulty involved with proving an attempt happened so long ago. So it just just clarifies that that for purposes of of this statute, child physical abuse means any act other than an an attempt committed by the defendant against a person 18 years of age or under, which would have constituted a violation of the aggravated assault statute in effect at the time. So I think uh, uh, that would actually do it. Because when you look at the language of the aggravated assault statute, it includes attempts, that was the issue that you noted, um, but by specifying that it's any act other than an attempt, then I think you would exclude those sorts of offenses from uh, the statute of limitations repeal. So if it was just an attempt, then it would be subject to the same three-year statute of limitations that's in existence currently. Mm -hmm. yep. And I did have highlighted on, line, on page three line, I don't know where it is now. I don't think it's gone. Oh, line four. Line yep. seven. The oh, sorry, issue line seven, of yep. 
of gross negligence. Is that the standard that we, <clears throat> is that the same standard we used in the other bill in the mm -hmm. child sexual abuse? Yes, mm -hmm. that's, uh, you see it right above there on line 20. Okay. <laughs> That's obviously a policy decision for the committee, but yes, that was the one you, you used last time. I should point out there's still that, I didn't fix that typo yet. I missed that on line, also on line seven, refers to sexual abuse. That should be physical abuse. Yep. Any questions for Eric, Kim, or... Um... Jerry, if you have any comments, we'd be happy to hear them now and discuss them. Senator, it's Jerry O'Neill. I, I think that makes sense, the, the change in the attempt language, taking that out of there, because you're right. Proof with respect to that would be so challenging. I think it's a wise move to take that out. Yeah, thank you, Senators. Um, I agree with respect to the attempt language. Um, it may be helpful also when you're actually referencing the statute to also again say accept attempts because it's the statute that actually sets forth the attempts. I think it's it might be the one that's listed right there in section E just for clarity. Um, with respect to um, gross negligence, I understand that that was probably something that was discussed and debated at length with respect to the sexual abuse cases. We have taken a look at how the courts in Vermont utilize that standard, and it is a high standard. Um, we've just put together some of the case law and the interpretation. We're happy to share that with the committee to consider it and um, whether or not it should be as equally applicable in a physical abuse case as opposed to a sexual abuse case. Um, I think the standards for sexual abuse are, are fairly clear. It's physical abuse where it may be muddied a little bit more. So, so just something to consider as to whether you want as high of a standard on a, on a physical abuse case as you would a sexual abuse case, which is harder, is a lot easier to prove. Um, Can you give us an example? I think it would help. Yeah, and I'm happy to put this in writing to you all to consider. Um, one case, uh, Canary versus the state, interpreted the standard gross negligence and the court wrote, gross negligence is substantially and appreciably higher in magnitude and more culpable than ordinary negligence. A driver's mo momentary inattention by itself is insufficient to warrant a finding of gross negligence. Likewise, falling asleep at the wheel does not in and of itself constitute gross negligence. Obviously this is a car accidents ca case. But if you were to look at some of these institutions, could you say that they fell asleep at the wheel and say they do not meet the standard of gross negligence? Um, that's how that court case could be interpreted. So we've just been looking at some of that case law and we're happy to put that in writing for you all to consider. That's just one of the cases that we came across. And, um, but I do recognize that that was probably debated in the last bill um, probably was a compromise, <laughs> as I understand it, um, in the last bill. It's just something because Senator Sears, you asked about it, um, yep. we looked into it, and we're happy to provide you Appreciate something. That. Um, that. Uh, Eric, you could take that down now. Thank you. Sure. Um, I, I'd actually like to get to vote the bill out today, if possible. It is a Senate bill, and so it is late, and would have to get rule suspension. Um, Can I ask a question, Dick? Yes. Yeah. Um, with regard to um, this whole thing, refers on on page three, lines um, the end of the first paragraph. It, damages may be awarded against an entity, an employed supervisory supervised or had responsibility for the alleged, the allegedly committing, had the responsible person allegedly committing the physical abuse um, if there's finding gross negligence. So I'm wondering, so this um, specifically says an entity, but I was thinking this was also against an individual person. 
No, the individual person. Oh, go ahead, Eric. I think you were probably going to be right on the money center, here. Is it, it against an individual center, Nitka? It would be the standard negligence standard that would apply. So, <clears throat> lack of reasonable care. So, neg the negligence standard. So, that's making, in a sense, what, what that sentence does, which is the same thing that was done with the respect to the sexual abuse cases, was to uh, make a different standard apply when the defendant is an institutional defendant, an entity as a defendant. In those cases, it would be a higher standard of proof, gross negligence, which is, you know, in shorthand, conscious disregard of a known risk, often is what gross negligence is described. So it's not just lack of reasonable care under the circumstances, but that you knew about a risk and you acted anyway. Um, so uh, I think the the decision that the committee reached a couple of years ago was that um, when you're allowing those actions essentially to revive uh, an action that would have been barred by a statute of limitations, but they're being revived going forward so that, you know, actions long ago can be brought. Um, you may remember it was a contentious discussion in committee with many different witnesses from a lot of different uh, perspectives. I think where the committee landed was have a have a higher standard when there's an institutional defendant, but keep the negligence standard for an individual. So when you go back to an individual, what if it was, um, uh, you know, a 17 year old, I'm wondering if a 17 year old living at home, um, sexually molests, say a 15 year old, are the parents of the 17 year old liable also for failure to supervise? Do you mean potentially? Yes. Yeah, I don't think this language has any impact because the pa parents are individuals. Um, and this is really a, a question of the uh, institutional defendant there, but it is certainly possible that um, there could be a negligent supervision claim against the parents in a fact pattern like that. Hmm. We're, we're not. The, the child sexual abuse is not it in this bill. I mean, the, the language is here, but um, we're focused on the, on the issue of the child physical abuse. And it, we are, but it comes right in here at the same time, right? Well, I mean, that's already in place, I realize, but. Right. Cool. Um, we decided on gross negligence because. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't have a problem with that. Senator Baruth. Yeah, I, I, and I, I um, Ms. Ms. Doherty is right. We did have uh, a, a back and forth and a compromise, and I'm comfortable with that. And I think absolutely we should mirror it in what we what we do rather than trying to create some different set of standards for physical abuse. Um, so I, I like the draft as it stands now. Um, I don't have any further issues with the language. <clears throat> I'm okay with it also. All right, so majority of the committee is okay with gross negligence uh, for the entity. Um, then a known risk. I mean, if, if they knew some of the testimony, uh, any other comments on the on the risk, Jerry? Any comments on the, the standard? Senator, thank you. I have none. Yeah. Uh, if the chair would entertain a motion, I would, I would move that um, the committee act favorably on draft one point one. Senator Baruth has moved that we uh, amend S ninety nine as seen in draft one point one. <laughs> with a technical amendment that Eric's going to move. 
<coughs> oh, any further discussion? Not Peggy, could you please call the roll? Sorry, give me one second. Yes, the floor. <coughs> okay. Senator Benning, oh, Senator Benning's not here. Senator Nicka. Yeah, yes. Senator White. Yes. Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. Now the motion is that um, further move that we report S99 favorably as amended. Ready? Okay. Senator any further, any further discussion? Hearing none, um, Peggy, could you please call the roll? Senator Nicka. Yes. Senator White. Yes. Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. Amazing. Um, I, I, um, we will get Senator Benning's vote um, when he returns. Um, so we'll hold on to the draft. Who would like to report this bill? I would be happy to report it unless you would like to report it. No, I think it'd be great if you were. Um, okay. That'd be fine. Sure. <clears throat> Senator Sears, could I ask you a question about sure. procedure? So any S bill now has to go to the rules committee in the yep. Senate first to be yep. let out? Okay. Yep. I believe so. And I did not, I have not, I didn't, I do want to talk to Rep, Max, Representative Grad. So um, to alert her that this is coming and then they know that we're dealing with and okay. But it may not, you know, it'll be up to the House, be up to the Rules Committee first whether they want to release the bill. Right. Um, and then um, And then the House Rules Committee will absolutely. take it and decide whether they're going to release it to the committee. Yeah. Okay. Cuz I have I have 3 S bills that yeah. Do we wait till tomorrow to get Senator Benning's vote? I How think we matter? could wait till tomorrow, which would okay. give me time to alert Representative, Representative Senator Ballant, Representative Grab, that we voted out S99, and it'll be going to the Senate Rules Committee, and would they be willing to, you know, take it up? Okay, so we don't do anything till tomorrow. Send it no, up to I, Secretary I or anything. It, okay, I just no, make sure. it gives Eric time to. Yep, yeah, it still needs to be. Proofed and edited by our staff, so I'll send it to you, Peggy. Once it once I get it back. Yep. Thanks. All right. Well, uh, since we had nothing else on the agenda, are you serious? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect to do this this quickly. <laughs> I thought, you know, hey, um, I, I tell you, the the witnesses from both both Kern Hatton and um, St. Joseph's Orphanage were so compelling. Um, they're the ones who really, uh, you know, <clears throat> the bravery of them coming forward, especially somebody 80 years old, yeah. I mean, to, to look back on what she experienced at Kern Hatton, and then you look at some of the folks that were there um, from um, St. Joseph's, um, mm -hmm. uh, just amazing. And uh Kim, you were going to get back to us in terms of the budget issue. Yeah. If there was something for the survivors of Kern Hatton that we could do similar to what Mark Winberg, Winberg is doing with um, St. Joseph's. Yeah. Yes, um, I spoke briefly with Eric on Monday and he alerted me that I need to talk with someone in appropriations. Um, well, that's three of us right here. Oh, um, excellent. <laughs> myself, Senator <laughs> you Bruce, said you were Senator in appropriations. Nitka. Excellent. Yeah, all three of us are on appropriation. So if yeah. you can just send us some kind of a memo, we'll be we'll be happy to take up. Okay. And what would you like in the memo? And um, just sort of our, yeah, just our plan? A, sort of what yeah, a plan to help the survivors um, yep. of the abuse to um, similar to what's going on with the St. Joseph survivors. And yeah. there has there has to be some place for the money to land. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there it's the Burlington YMCA, is it? Or? Yeah. Um, so some organization that's going to agree to, uh, or I suppose you could create an organization for the survivors um, and open a, a bank account for the purpose of hiring a facilitator or however you want to spend it. But Well, you, or you could, you could do something like um, uh, United Way of Wyndham County. Yeah. Um, because it, it, Kern Hatton was in, is in Wyndham County. So mm-hmm. that would, um, I would think something like that might be, I was trying to think of an organization in Wyndham County that would. That's actually a good idea. The United what Way. your local mental health center? Yeah. And, and would, with HCRS? Yeah. It, it could be. Um, I think if you're looking at just a pass through that it would be less complicated to United Way than to the, HCRS, but that's. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the organizations. Mm-hmm. Of Wyndham oh, it's a great org. They're they're both great. And <laughs> United Way does a lot of um, here does a lot of that kind of pass through um, stuff, and they're very um, uh, results driven. So. Okay, so they essentially hold the funds and then disperse it to the potential facilitator counselor um, yeah. as the, okay. I that's think that's how the Burlington situation operates. Okay. I think that's how it worked. I, I don't know if they are the ones that hire, hire the facilitator or how that worked in Burlington. Okay, and Mr. Winberg may have more information on that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and would there be a time frame over which that money would be spent so it isn't all just put out in <clears throat> swoop and then? I think it's actually with the attorney general's office, by the way. Oh, it is, okay. I believe that you could contact. Um, you know, what I'm thinking is, um, you know, these people have come forward now, there may be others later mm-hmm. who might become a part of that group and it would be good not to have the money used all used up at once. Well, we we pre-fund it because they're not starting it until July 1st. But but the way I understand it is the money doesn't go to the to the people right. who are there. No, the no. money goes for forming the group and then people can right. join it any any time. And right. and in the case of Burlington it was for the facilitator to do all of that work to to reach out to survivors, to organize them, to facilitate at the meetings. Um, the one who requested the money from for the Burlington one of me was um, the Attorney General. Yeah. But I mean, that might be the place. Although that might be because it was a Burlington issue. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, I know. But I mean, it would be great if the AG's office handled yeah. And Hatton too. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I have a colleague who is is good friends and is supposed to put me in touch um, with the AG's office. So we will look into that and also United Way. Um, and I will also follow up with Mr. Winberg just to get a better sense of how that process worked. Um, mm-hmm. So we can put something formal together for you all to consider. And we really appreciate it. It's it's this is a critical piece to helping them heal. Um, yeah. Many of them have wanted to reach out to each other and um, and seek some sort of counseling together, and this is <clears throat> going to help answer that problem for them. So thank you all so much for that. Thank you. Yeah, I thought it was a very um, interesting when, um, and I don't remember which one it said, which person said it, but that they had gone through all kinds of counseling and therapy and everything, but once they were part of this group. That's when they really started to heal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I yeah. think you think you're all alone. You think the, you're the yeah. only one that this ever happened to. And mm-hmm. you find out that so many other people are in a similar situation that makes you feel um, a little bit better. Um, and that you begin to go through a process with other people. Um, it's not un, unlike a lot of the group. Uh, issues. They've experienced something. They may not have been together and may not have been at the same time, but they've always, they've already experienced a similar problem. 
Yeah, I almost think of it, Senator Sears, as when you think about uh, about children in the same in an abusive family. You know, they they are there for each other. They help heal through you know being supportive of one another. I think a lot of them at Kern Hatton felt more like these were their family. You know, the other peers were their their family. So, um, I think that being able to relate back and move forward together will absolutely. Uh, and it may help some of those who have yet not yet. Um, processed, yeah. Processed the trauma and dealt with it, mm -hmm. and are in denial about it. You know, I, I, you know, I thought it was fascinating. This woman had taken on herself and donated money to Kernat and been a member of the alumni, had done all those things that you would expect from somebody who was had a positive experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 hard to process in that regard because so much of it was, you know, uh, helping them with food and clothing and a place to live, mm -hmm. you know. So there's that piece that they really feel, um, you know, a sense of of dedication to the organization as a result of that piece of it. And then there's the other piece that's far more challenging to process. So. Well, thank you both very much, uh, Jerry and Kim, and appreciate you being here.